This is a special presentation of EA Sports from the Coliseum in Oakland. Our tribute to the coach, the John Madden Legacy Game. I'm Brandon Gaughan here to take you through the proceedings. And coming up, we're going to tell the story of a man who was truly larger than life and whose impact on the sport of football, certainly it's going to live on for decades and decades to come. Now, we've assembled a couple of rosters featuring some of Coach's favorite players from both yesterday and today. And Coach himself will be on the sidelines for both squads, trying to motivate his guys to get through. And I'm joined now by my good friend Charles Davis. CD, your thoughts on John Madden and what he meant to the sport he loved so much. For me, Brandon, it's the word joy. He brought that to the game of football and brought the game to so many people. He stayed involved his entire life. And moving forward, when you think of football, you're always going to think John Madden. The Coliseum back to its original 70s glory. What a scene in the East Bay. And we're underway in the John Madden Legacy game. Here comes Devin Hester bringing it out. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. So it's the NFC Stars who will get the ball first. And Charles, as we alluded to, we've got a different era of coach on each sideline. So the man coaching this NFC squad, and we'll call him Young John Madden, this is a coach who was trying to establish a foothold in the NFL and on the cusp of doing it very successfully. Yeah, you think back to that period, those early days as a coach of the Raiders, the late 60s in the AFL and then in the NFL in the early 70s. Coach was a guy who was ahead of his time. The Raiders were one of the first teams to have mini camps, one of the first to film practice because he wanted to practice coaching as much as he could. And his teams, they were successful right from the start of his head coaching tenure. That's a gain of 13 and a very solid opening play for this offense. So as we mentioned at the top, well, let's take you through the life of John Madden. And you know, it's very fitting that we're here back in the Bay Area, not just because John's so associated with Raider football, but also because this was where he spent his formative years. Yeah, he grew up over Daly City with his buddy John Robinson, who would also become an NFL head coach. He played his high school ball at Jefferson High, eventually wound up playing tackle at the University of Oregon, and later Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Took well enough that in 1958, he was a 21st-round draft pick of the Philadelphia Eagles. That's right, the draft had 30 rounds then. On first and 10 is Sanders. And he stopped immediately there. But Charles, you mentioned Coach was a 21st-round draft pick back in 1958. It was the Philadelphia Eagles who selected him. But unfortunately for John, knee problems, they just continued to dog him. He was hurt in his first training camp. Actually never saw the field as a player in the NFL. But it was still during his time with the Eagles. You and I were talking about this before going on air, that you could start to see the light bulb going on for what his career path might entail. And it went on in a big way, didn't it? Because Tries for Rice, intercepted. Rod Woodson with a pick. And they will finally get him as he's all the way down near the 40-yard line. Not something you see very often from a quarterback of his caliber, an opening drive interception. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind that even he's surprised at how that one played out. But we know this guy is not going to stop him from continuing to fire as this game goes along. Probably give a little nod of respect across the field for that one and let him know he'll be back the very next series. So Charles, as mentioned, we've got another Coach Madden over here on the AFC sideline. Of course, his Raiders, members of the AFC West. So this is a conference he battled in for his entire career. And you think about the landscape of the NFL as he was getting into the back half of his tenure. It was a golden era for coaches. You had Don Shula, Tom Landry, Chuck Noll, Bud Grant. But it was John Madden who had the best winning percentage of them all, CD. 759, the best ever. Brandon, it's hard to believe he could be so successful in the conference with all those great teams. The Steelers won four Super Bowls. The Dolphins won two and were a mainstay in the playoffs. The Colts were tough. The Broncos came out late and went to a Super Bowl themselves. But against Hall of Fame coaches, John Madden's record, 36-16-2. That's pretty incredible. His Raiders were a factor each and every year. They'll yeah, come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. 
They'll try and pound it with a big back battle. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. On now is Vinatieri as he'll try the field goal. From the right hash, this from 53. Vinatieri's kick is good. And the AFC on the board first, it's 3-0. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball out, what's the first thing the coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense, the firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. With the NFC offense coming out here. And you know, Charles, Coach Madden always said that if he had one drive to win a game and he had to pick a quarterback, he would pick Kenny Stabler. But I think if you asked him to omit any of his Raiders players, there's a good chance the guy he'd select would be Brett Favre. Brett Favre is always smiling. He's always laughing. He's always talking to someone. He remembers that it's a game. And if it's a game, you should have fun. And Brandon, that always reminds me of a great movie line where one of the players was telling a coach, every time I say it's a game, you say it's a business. And every time I say it's a business, you say it's a game. With coach, it's always a game. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. One quarter in the books at the Coliseum. What a day. It's the AFC Stars with the early lead. This is the John Madden Legacy Game on EA Sports. The NFC with the football here to begin the second quarter. Second and nine now from the 21. Second down and back they go to Sanders. And he'll take this to about the 24, a gain of three. Charles, you know, it was in the early 1960s that a young John Madden made the acquaintance of the owner of the Oakland Raiders, one Al Davis, of course, and the two, they really bonded, would become one of the best owner-coach duos in NFL history. And to take it a step further, Al Davis became someone who John referred to as his best friend. Yeah, 1967, Brandon. Al Davis hired Coach Madden to be a linebacker's coach. Remember, this was still the AFL at that point. We had not merged totally with the NFL. And Coach Madden, he paid dividends almost immediately. Helped the Raiders win the AFL title in 1968. And that meant a date with the Green Bay Packers in what was now known as Super Bowl II. But by 1969, at the age of 32, just 32, Brandon, John Madison, the man of head coach of the Oakland Raiders, and what a ride he the Raiders in the NFL were about to go on. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, he shot in CD like he was out of a cannon from that linebacker position. And even though they had a running back in the backfield, no one could stop him. Well, you certainly diagnosed that play perfectly because as fast as he got into the backfield, you're exactly right. The running back had no shot to get over and try to protect his quarterback, and a sack resulted. Charles, you talked about John Madden and the Raiders going on a ride. Well, try these numbers on for size. In 10 seasons as a head coach, the Raiders won their division seven times. They finished second the other three times and he became the youngest coach to amass 100 career regular season victories and is still, to this day, the franchise leader in wins. And when you think about it, that's where that rivalry with Kansas City really took root, as did the expression commitment to excellence. And boy, was it personified by the players who played for Coach Madden. On offense, I've got quarterback Kenny Stable, wide receiver Cliff Branch, wide receiver Cliff Lippincott, tight end Dave Casper, to name a few. How about those great linemen he had? Center Jim Otto, guard Gene Upshaw, tackle Art Shell, all of them in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And guys on the defensive side of the ball, the mad stork himself, Ted Hendricks, Willie Brown, John Matuzak, Otis Sistrunk, and Big Ben Davidson. So many great players, so many great memories. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. 
But the AFC making their way out is one of Coach's favorites, another local guy, Tom Brady, who will be at the controls. And boy, Coach always admired the way number 12 could run an offense, and especially his ability to stay calm under pressure. Tom Brady is a guy who's always looking downfield. He never looks at the rush. He hangs in the pocket, and he makes a throw. He's a cool guy. He's a tough guy. Let me tell you, there's no one calmer in the pocket than Tom Brady. And I know that Coach has a great appreciation for Tom Brady. He turned 45 back on August 3rd because Coach coached a guy like him in uh, George Blanda, who played a long time in the NFL. In this game, it features legends and active players. Tom Brady qualifies as both. Charles, you think about all the success that John Madden had as an NFL head coach, and he had plenty, and we talked about it, including the 10 straight winning seasons, a Super Bowl title. But like any great coach, he also suffered through a few tough losses along the way as well. And Brandon, those tough losses came in high-stakes games because they always had such great success. Think about it this way. Six times in his 10 years, the Raiders were knocked out near the AFL championship game or the AFC championship game. But might be a divisional round exit. That's the one that bothered him most of all. Three River Stadium, December 1972. Yes, the immaculate reception game. Franco Harris grabbing the ball that was deflected almost at his shoe tops and picked it up and took it in for a game-winning score to give the Steelers a 13-7 victory. And partner, anyone who loves black and silver still doesn't believe that ball hit anyone in black and silver that day. And that play should never have counted. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now Brady. He finds his man complete. It's Gonzalez. The CD we spoke of some of the Raiders' tough playoff losses through the decade of the 70s, but for one shining season, they put it all together, and that was 1976. You remember a 13-1 regular season, a memorable playoff win over New England. They dominated the Steelers 24-7 in the AFC title game, and then a meeting with the Minnesota Vikings in Super Bowl XI. Oh, Brandon, what a game that was down at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. A gorgeous 53-degree day, perfect for football. Raiders down to 16 to nothing lead at the half. And Clarence Davis, no relation, although I would certainly claim him strong on the ground, 137 yards rushing. How about Freddie Bolitnikoff, the MVP of that game, catching everything that came his way. Kenny Stabler running the offense with precision. And we all remember the one that sealed it, the grand old man himself, Willie Brown, with the laser-focused eyes, picking off Fran Tarkenton and taking it 75 yards for a touchdown. 32 to 14, the final score. Raiders had their first Super Bowl title, and we got the iconic shot. All right, rifles one, and that's gonna be intercepted. Picked up by the Hall of Famer, John Lynch. And his guys are gonna take over at the 21-yard line. Brandon, I'm not going to tell him that you called him old in our pregame meeting, but this guy has been around a long time. If there's a trick in the book, he knows it. He probably even wrote a few chapters, and this is what he's always had, and that's a nose for the football. He's able to come away here with the interception. Now the NFC heading back out. Hall of Famer Randy Moss, a part of this offense. And Coach Madden, boy, he always appreciated the ferociousness with which number 84 attacked the football in the air. As Randy Moss says, just chunk it up there, dog, and I'll go get it. And Coach, boy, did he ever go get it. Over 15,000 receiving yards, 156 touchdowns. And how about this? From his rookie year of 1998 until 2009, those were his prime seasons, right? He led the league in touchdowns five times, but even more so. He showed us all how to go up and get it. Great body control. No one's ever done it better playing the ball in the air. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Now the NFC going to call the first of their three timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Fard's throw pulled in by Kittle. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. This will be from 56 yards out. 
And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And that will tie us at 3-3. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice one for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. Field goal is all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. This will be fielded inside the five. So we are at halftime of the John Madden Legacy game, and now we present a special tribute to the man of the hour, narrated by the Raiders' own Trey Mosley. What comes to mind when you hear the name Madden? Is it the coach who led the Raiders to their first Super Bowl victory? Perhaps it's the broadcaster who entertained millions of fans. Or maybe it's the video game known simply by his name. But no matter what comes to mind when you hear the name Madden, everyone thinks of one thing football the core of it was football it's the greatest game in the world the left goes to the right the right goes to the left John Madden is the most important figure in the history of professional football. Show me somebody else who did it on three levels the way John did it. There's nobody. Boy, Charles, yeah, that's, that is really well done. Coach was something else, wasn't he? I'm reminded what Al Davis said when he was inducted coach of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Brandon. He loved the game. He loved his team, he loved the Raiders, he loved this league, and you can see it with everything he does. No doubt. Well, it's quite possible, though, that now he would say, hey, enough of that, let's play some football. Oh, the second half, forthcoming from Oakland. Now the AFC offense heading back out. You know, Charles, Coach really loved to utilize his tight ends in the passing game. You think about Dave Casper, Hall of Famer for those great Raider teams. And I think he saw a lot of Dave Casper in an all-Madden staple, Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez is the type of tight end I think everyone's looking for. He's the guy that can make some big plays from that tight end position. Let me tell you, you better make sure you have him accounted for on every play. And that's exactly right, because Dave Casper, he could shred defenses down the middle of the field. And that's exactly what Tony Gonzalez did in his entire career, a 14-time Pro Bowl selection. Only Tom Brady has more. There are six guys in the 15,000-yard receiving club. He's the only tight end in there. Tony Gonzalez, every snap, he had to know where he was because he could make plays short, medium, and long, and often put the ball in the end zone. On the draw. Here's Allen. Nowhere to go that time. Might have got the yard up to the 25. We will need five on this play to move the sticks. Throwing now is Brady. Got a man. It's Andre Reid. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. So now, Charles, to pick up the story we've been telling, John Madden at 42, he just completed a 10-year stint as the coach of the Raiders. He wants to step away a bit from the grind of coaching, but he doesn't want to step away from the game of football. So he ends up signing on with CBS in 1979 to try his hand at broadcasting. And much like his coaching career, he was pretty much an instant success. Partner, he really connected with the people right from the start, and people may not remember. He wasn't even on the number one team in the beginning. He worked his way up. But the same things that made him a great coach made him a great broadcaster. The ability to show the big picture, yet break it down into the details. That's what he did with his teams. That's what he did with the people. That way, he was simple to understand, yet insightful for viewers. He did with that big personality that he had, 
One that connected with everyone. On first and ten, here's Brady. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. So for Coach Madden, Charles, here by 1981, his broadcasting career is really taking off. He's elevated to the network's number one booth that calls all the big matchups. He gets the plum assignment of calling Super Bowl 16, 49ers and Bengals, and he's teamed up with Pat Summerall. And that pairing ultimately will go on to be one of the most influential in sports broadcasting history. Influential not just in us listening to them. Remember, they went out and called eight Super Bowls together. But how they put together kind of the template that all of us broadcasters follow now sitting down with the head coaches and the quarterbacks and the stars of each team before a ball game to get extra information. And the way that those two paired together, Pat Summerall, short, concise, to the point, and turned it over to Coach Madden to fill in all the big details. As you mentioned, CD, talking about John Madden, the broadcaster, he called eight Super Bowls with Pat Summerall, three more with Al Michaels later in his career. He spent nearly three decades in the booth all told. And not only was he beloved for his mannerisms, we know that, but he was an innovator as well. Yeah, Brandon, you talk about things like the Telestrator, which totally became identified with him, and now it's a staple for all analysts to have in the booth. And then you think about things like Chuck Ducking on Thanksgiving, when he used words like boom and pow. He upgraded the old Madden team. He's a popular commercial pitch man. And even the Madden cruiser was unique, and you had to be someone to get a ride out of too. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Brady going to throw. And that is caught for an AFC touchdown. Tony Gonzalez, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the AFC has taken the lead. What a great weapon. So often, such a big mismatch. And there's no route he can't run. You name it, he's going to do it. And he's a matchup nightmare for the defense. No matter who they put on him, he's going to win the battle. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10-3 now. Three quarters complete now in the John Madden Legacy game from Oakland. It's the AFC on top. And we're back to the Coliseum after this. Back now here on EA Sports. Well, the fourth quarter will begin with a kickoff following the score of the final play of the third quarter. Hester going to decide against a return, and they will spot this at the 25. The offense for the NFC ready to get their next drive started. And now, after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. Now, CD, we did get a little ahead of ourselves talking about John Madden, the broadcaster in the 90s and 2000s, because there was another product during that time period that he became quite famous for, and something that you might know a little bit about, and that's the video game that bears his name. Originally John Madden football when it was first released back in the late 1980s and now known the world over simply as Madden. And Coach saw this originally as a way to teach the game of football. The early designs were for a seven on seven game, but he said no chance. He would not sign off on it. He wanted to be as realistic as possible. He told him, call me when it's 11 on 11. And he got his wish. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. So, see, you look at the accumulation of John Madden's achievements in the world of football, the coaching success, the Super Bowl title, the incredible career as a broadcaster with 12 Emmy Awards, Madden the video game. It was very fitting back in 2006 that John Madden got the call to be enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. A more deserving person, you will not find. He gave an incredible speech on that day, Brandon. So many of his former Raider players were in attendance. He talked about how he envisioned that when the last person turns off the lights in the hall every night, that the bus talked football amongst themselves. And what a discussion that might be.
Yeah, he finished his speech by saying, today feels like the second time in my life that I'm being carried off on the shoulders of others. Yet instead of off the field, it's into the Hall of Fame. This has been the sweetest ride of them all. Call it a gain of six on the play. And third and eight now. So it's the NFC with the football as we welcome you back. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. He's back to throw. He rifles one that's intercepted. Now he's hit on the return. It's a loose football. Well, do you want to unpack that one or do you want me to? You're the boss. We get the interception, then really he's just too loose with the football on the return, and he costs it right back up the other way. I've seen this happen in an NFL game, and boy, did it cost someone. San Francisco at Atlanta a few seasons ago. Atlanta throws the interception. San Francisco runs it back. Game is salted away. Fumbles on the return. Atlanta gets it back, drives down, kicks the game-winning field goal. <laughs> and he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. When you think about John Madden in his retirement years post-broadcasting, he was about as active as most people are in their working years. I mean, he continued to play a key role on the NFL's competition committee. He was available to a wide range of people as a tutor, as a mentor. He continued to teach the game of football to all who would listen. And Charles, as you and I know, he even continued to provide input, a lot of input, on the Madden video game. Yeah, I know a lot of folks that design and build this game. Certainly look forward to the yearly visits after the Madden compound that he had out of the East Bay. They pitched the new aspects of each year's game to him, get his feedback, and then get to sit back and spend six hours with him on a Sunday watching football and listening to him tell stories and talk even more about it. It had to be an incredible experience for all involved. They keep it on the ground. Allen again. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Now the NFC going to take a timeout their second as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Now a carry for Allen. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. That will give up the middle to Bettis. And a short gain here down to the 22. Credit with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Here's Allen. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. Up the middle, they run with Bellis. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. Terry's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, some field goals are bigger than others, and that one makes this a two-score game. And with the way their defense has played all game long, that's kind of a love letter to them because that might very well be all the points they need. After the main field goal, here's Adam Vinatieri to kick it away. And Hester content to hold on to this one and bring it out to the 25. Ready to begin their next drive here, the NFC offense. 
What do you do here down like this in this situation? Do you maybe just pick something out of the playbook you haven't called in a while, or you call it a day? You can do that, or you pick something that's a staple for you and should work better and try and execute that on okay. the way out the door. Maybe get back to base and feel a little bit better as you end a ball game. It's been a frustrating one for you. Then. We'll see if they go back to base. Still first down. So this helps to start a drive. After the penalty, it'll be first and five. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. As time. So it's a win here for the AFC on an incredible afternoon of football and remembering the life of John Madden. Before we go, one final message. And for all of us at EA Sports, this one's for you, Coach. I just say this, I thank you all very much. This has been the sweetest ride of them all.